I'm Christopher McLean. Welcome to Heroic Design. Requirements set the targets our design must achieve. Today we'll learn how requirements can help both you and your users be more successful. This is the third episode on our design project, a clever plastic bottle cap design. We're actually going to backtrack a bit in the design process and look at requirements. Usually we create these before the functional map, but I think this will make more sense now that we have the functional map from video 11. We've all had products that failed to meet our expectations, probably because of a mismatch between our requirements and the requirements set by the designer. Requirements give us, as designers, clear goals to meet. They tell us how far we have to go in our design and let us know when we get there. We'll talk about how requirements fit into the design process, and then we'll create a few requirements for this clever cap design. We'll see how the requirements push us toward this particular solution. Every design has targets set by the user, the market, and often regulators too. For example, a light bulb has brightness in lumens, it also has a color temperature, which indicates whether it is more yellow or more white. There are a lot of different light bulbs for sale, which means that users have a wide range of needs when it comes to brightness and color temperature. Maybe our users need a bright white light in their desk or a soft yellow light in their living room. If we set the wrong targets for our design, the users we want will choose another product with the right targets. So requirements come early in the process, after we empathize with users enough to understand them and their problem. And requirements usually speak to the whole design because we haven't broken the problem down into sub-functions yet. A quick review of our overall function and functional map. The overall function is seal, unseal, reseal soda for drinking. This is just the overall function for this top part of the solution. And this is the functional map with the three subfunctions: prevent leakage and contamination of soda, indicate soda hasn't been tampered with, and reseal soda. These were developed in episode 11. And this is the solution. It looks like a standard plastic bottle cap, but the top is attached to the bottom and a small cam keeps the cap away from the opening in the bottle. As we create the requirements, we'll be focusing on this third subfunction, reseal soda. Because we set requirements before the functional map, they typically cover the whole design. Some requirements will apply to specific subfunctions, but we don't generally know that yet. A great place to look for requirements is your competitor's website. Look for numbers or other bars your design will need to jump over. If you don't know the actual numbers you're aiming at, just leave them blank for now and update them later. And always state the units for your numbers. I use categories to help me brainstorm requirements. This is my list with some examples. And I'm just making up the requirements and the numbers. Don't design a bottle cap based on these requirements. In the functional category, I have many requirements. Leakage out and leakage in. Zero leakage is tough, so we want to allow as much as possible. I've set leakage to zero before opening, but that might be unrealistic. I'm allowing some leakage after resealing. And we have to assume the bottle is upside down and shaken because that will happen. So there's an internal pressure. There are a few temperatures and you might even want it to seal when frozen. That would complicate the design and testing. So think hard before you set that requirement. For the reseal soda subfunction, we are more interested in the usage temperature. This design only has to reseal a limited number of times, and you would determine that by looking at your users. Physical requirements. For these, I have portable, total mass, and liquid volume. Portable might lead us to a certain shape, but I don't want to dictate that shape up front. Ergonomics. For this design, I think this is about the amount of force, torque, or energy the user is able to exert. 
it is a requirement that it be resealable without tools. I don't want to say by hand because that is ableist. And I'm not sure which of these is more useful, pulling force, torque, or grip strength. I'm put them all here as limits to what almost all people can do to keep the design space as open as possible. If the solution is like a cork, pulling force applies. If the solution is a screw top, torque applies. Lifetime. A great way to brainstorm requirements is to read Wikipedia's list of units. Time is the first one on the list and there are a few possible time requirements. Time to reseal so your user isn't frustrated. There's also the time that the soda bottle can be left resealed. Maybe it has to last at least a week. This could be the same thing as the leakage requirement, so be careful you're not putting in conflicting requirements. Reliability. We're designing for all the requirements, so you would think that means it would always work. But designing and building for 100% reliability is difficult and expensive. For the data on your hard drive, 100% reliability is the requirement, so you should have a full backup or two. But for this application, your customer won't pay for 100% reliability. Reliability is often stated as a mean time to failure. In this case, I've set it to a decent number of uses. This is a statistical measure that captures design, manufacture, and use. It would likely require more information to state this clearly. Safety is a huge field, and I like to think of safety in two ways. Each country sets regulations to keep people safe. For this application, countries regulate food contact materials. There are no options here. You must learn and follow the regulations. You might even need to do third-party testing to prove it. The second has to do with your user, their problem, and the specific design itself. Sometimes you can set requirements for this, but safety problems often only come out in the design failure modes and effects analysis, the DFEMA. This is done after you create the design. Sustainability. Again, there are two aspects to this. There may be legislated requirements for materials and recyclability. These are currently changing rapidly, especially for single-use packaging. The second part is user preference. Many of your users are buying single-use designs less often. I'll assume these designers were following or anticipating recycling legislation or reflecting user preference. So the sealing and resealing solutions must be kept with the soda bottle and must be recyclable with the soda bottle. These are massive restrictions on the solution space. Set requirements like this carefully and deliberately, as they will limit your options and likely drive up cost. On to cost. We could set the cost of the whole soda bottle and sealing mechanism, or the sealing plus resealing mechanism, or just this resealing mechanism in the third subfunction. I've decided to cost the whole system because this will be a highly integrated solution with a lot of trade offs. Low cost drives us to the fewest number of parts and the most integrated solution. I've probably missed a dozen requirements. You can put them in the comments. From this list of requirements, you can start to see how the designers were driven toward this solution. So be careful how you set your requirements. One final thought, don't change requirements easily. In the middle of a design, people will want the design to do more and more. Some of this is legitimate as you learn more about your user and their problem. However, this will take more time and make your design more complex and expensive. It would be better to reduce the number of requirements throughout the design as you realize they are unhelpful or limiting. Near the end of a design, when the going gets tough, we might want to lower requirements that are tough to hit. Hold steady and only change requirements if you must. With a little more effort and ingenuity, you can often make it work. And check back regularly to see if you have achieved the requirements. When we start a design, we want the biggest solution space possible. Possible is the important word though. If the solution space is too big, we'll just be staring into the infinite with no idea where to go.
If you don't know where to go, you'll go everywhere, and there will be no end to your design journey. Requirements set the targets your users need and let you know when you get there. They also keep you on the right side of the law so you can keep selling your design and solving your user's problem. That will bring success to both you and your users. And if it's time for you to start turning your ideas into products, the Heroic Design Workbook is a complete and rigorous product design process that will help you create remarkable products. A link is in the notes. Thank you for your time and attention. I'll see you soon.